Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So don't forget to click that subscribe and bell icon to receive a notification each time I upload a new video. Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So today, um, I'm going to have a play. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do, but I do know that I want to play with either my Mid Mod 1 stamp set or number 2. But I'm probably going to go with number 1 because that's what my gut's telling me today to play with. Um, but I also, I've got my brayer out as well. Um, and I thought I'm going to try and build up a background first of all onto some watercolour cardstock. This is 300 GSM or 140 pound um, hot pressed watercolour cardstock so it's smooth, there's no grain or texture to it. It's um, supposed to be better for stamping on because I'm going to be doing stamps. Then that's what it's got. So I've also pulled out some of my um, new Americana paint, so I've only just recently bought all these. I've got a fairly decent collection at the moment. I've got 30, uh, 33 colours or 36 colours. Uh, yes, 36 colours at the moment. I still need another 10 and then I'll be happy with the colour ranges that I've got. Some of them are quite similar, like these these three-ish colours are quite similar, but hey-ho. But today I want to play with something light. So I've got light buttermilk and sunny day. So I'm going to be playing with those. The fabulous little boxes of those. I can get um, 26 paints in, was it 13 paints in each box? No, 23 paints in each box. There you go. <clears throat> so, what I want to do is I've got my paint mat, and this is what I'm going to be putting the brayer or the paint on the brayer. You can tell these are brand new looks. I've still not taken the wrappers off the top. Mm -mm -mm. Ow, I tried to do it with my teeth and I just hurt myself. <clears throat> There we go. That's what scissors were invented for. Duh. Right, so that's that one open. And then sunny day. New paint day. Ooh. Wish every day was new paint day. I just can't afford to. Right. Of course, brand new paint. So they will need shaking up because probably the binder and the pigment they started to separate while they've been sat on the shelf or in transit. So a brand new paint, if they've been sat for a while, definitely, definitely just need a bit of a shake up. And that's Mr. eBay, what are you telling me? I ordered a book um, from a, an eBay supplier and they cancelled the order without even telling me. Just refunded the money, they didn't even tell me. Rubbish, rubbish customer service, but hey ho. Right, okay, so I'm just going to lightly. I know it's very, very subtle, and you probably might not even be able to see this on the camera because it's the light buttermilk is, as you can imagine, a very, very kind of light cream colour. And I don't know whether or not the camera is sophisticated enough to be able to actually pick it up. But there'll be splodge on there. That's what happens. Oh we're going from bad to worse, aren't we? Baby wipe. I think it's gonna be one of those days today. I'm going to have a day full of what my dad calls the buggeration factor. more commonly known as Sod's Law. There we go. Right, close that up. So anyway, so I sent them a rather scathing message, basically telling them how rubbish I thought they were. This is what happens when you buy from big companies on eBay. They don't really care. Oh 
Okay, so while that's still wet, let's just hope that I don't get a splodge of the sand. Yes. So this is the sunny day paint. I'm going to do the same, pick some paint up on the brayer, and then now I've gone for a yellowish background or a sunny background because I'm going to be playing with my mid mod um, stamps. I want a kind of 1950s contemporary. Kind of feel in the background. Hello, Mr. Bentley Bobs. You're trying to get comfortable. I've brought his bed up. It's still not 100%. It's still a little bit poorly. Um, with his poorly tummy. So I've brought his bed up so he can sit next to me. Whether he likes it or not. I'm just building the colour up. As you can see. So anyway, as I was saying about this book, um, yes, I sent them a scathing message telling them how rubbish what I thought of their customer service and they've just replied. No doubt it'll be full of suspect platitudes. Okay, so you can see that kind of mottled background. There are a few little flecks of gubbins there. That That's fine, I don't mind that. Um, you can't really see um, that buttermilk now, the light buttermilk, now that I've actually put it down and put the yellow over the top. Um, so I'm just wondering whether I ought to introduce an even darker yellow. This is True Ochre. Of course, I'll need to open that one as well. Because new paint. Yeah, the reason I bought um, all these Americana ones is because I found myself reaching for the Dina Wakely paint all the time. And although I do love the Dina Wakely paint, um, the palette is kind of restrictive because you know she's only got so many colours, which is fine, you know, but. I do like a bit of a variation now and again. I see, now that's better. That's much better. I'm hoping the camera is picking that up. But if not, I will show a bit of a close-up in a moment. Let's get some more of that paint down. Yeah, so in the Deco Art Americana paint, um, there's a lot of colours to choose from and they ain't too expensive as well. So um, I started off buying the one set of colours, I think it, there were 16 colours in and then I started to build up extras once I'd got and downloaded the colour chart from the website. Raw edge is a bit grating on me. I want a little bit of something here. Um, yeah, so there's a lot more colours to choose from, which is fine, which is great, because we like choice. Now, why isn't that picking that up? That's rather odd. Picking it up on the um, on the mat, but it's not going down where I want it to. One more quick splodge. One over. That's it. Got it now. like that. I don't clean the brayer off. Used to, but I don't bother anymore. Okay, so I need to get this dry. So once that's dry, 
and I've cleaned this off, I'll come back. Okay, so now that the background is dry, I'm going to bring in my stamp press because I'm going to be using stamps and I'm just going to pop a couple of the weights just on there because the paper has buckled slightly but not a lot. So I'm going to bring in stamp set number one. So this is the Midmod 1 stamp set. This is the one with the motifs, the icons on there. And I'm going to use these two today. Um, so I've got this one and that one. These are what I call um, the kidney shapes. So, but these to me also the ones that look more like um, the tops of flowers, if you like. So I'm going to come in first of all and I'm going to position that one there. So just move that out of the way. Close that down and this is a solid one. So you can use pretty much whatever colours you want to do. So I'm going to grab, I think, um, I'm going to have da -da -da, a red colour in inky. So shall we use archival inks? No, that's going to be too, too much, I think. Let's have an oxide. So shall we have fire brick or red oxide? Fired brick or red oxide? Red oxide? What am I talking about? Candied apple? Oh, good grief. Good grief, man. Okay. So let's get this inked up. Inky dinky dude. Takes a while with these oxides. I know people have gone absolutely mad for them, but I. Not all that enamoured, but I bought them thinking they'd be all that, and they're not. At all. But, there you go, pants of everything. See? Can't have everything. Not happy with that at all. Let's try again. I may have to switch to a different type of ink. Yeah, I think it's probably because I've actually got texture on the um, on the paper now because of the stamp. So let's just try a different one. Let's try carnation red in the archival and see what happens there. I told you this was just going to be a play down today. Let's get rid of that. Just talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> talk amongst yourselves. Okay. It may also be that because my um, oxides are fairly old now, as in I've had them since they came out, but never really used them, so I don't know what the shelf life is, but we'll see. Now it's definitely, definitely because of the texture in the background, it's the only thing it can be, so we'll just keep going. I could never have done this without the stamp press. Well, I could. There are other things on the market, but... I couldn't have done it without a stamp repositioner, let's put it that way. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to get any better than that. Okay, so I've got that one there, and I'm going to do another one up here. Just there. 
going to be a fairly kind of minimalist page today. Um, now let's keep on going with the red. I might get different effects. Depending on where I'm placing the stamp because of the layers of paint. Shouldn't really need that many. Yep, that'll do for that one. And then we'll reposition the other one so it's about here. So I'm just going to do three. Do you dare move? So this one's going to be interesting. Probably down to the buckled paper. I might need to put something underneath it. Don't like that at all. Let's just ink up the tip on this one and see what happens. Fair in love and war and mixed media. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to get any, any better kind of impression than that. I think it's definitely. See where I've gone over the paint, you can see it's actually collected where that splodge of the ochre was, whereas on this side it hasn't too much, but hey ho. These are the trials and tribulations. Okay, so next, I'm going to use this one, that one. So this is the one that I designed um, so that it looks like a plant stamen um, or an exploding um, atom or whatever you like. So I'm gonna place that towards the top up there and then I'm going to grab the stays on I'm hoping that this is going to go better stamps are catching not good well, that's probably down to again the uneven paper because it's wrinkled a bit. Let's give it a couple of goes. Just wipe the edge of the stamp. Okay, so this one will do across the middle about there. And I will just wipe the edges just in case. Just very, very gently. Okay. 
That's looking all right. Just lightly tap and go back. Okay, now this one's still wet. I know because I can see a shine on it, so I'm just going to give it a quick blast. And then I'll be back when it's done. Okay, I've positioned the stamp where I wanted it to go, and I've just lifted the lid back up. And I'm just going to lightly go over this one. I've just moved those around a little bit. Just to kind of try and hold the page down. Yeah, perfect. Well, I say perfect. It's as near as it's going to get anyway. So I'll put that stamp over there and then come back over here. Done with that. And then I can put, just for the time being, Okay, so now I want a food ball pen. And then I'm going to just draw a couple of squiggly lines. And I'm going to do the same thing for this one over here. And then bring that one down like so. You can hear the pen grabbing, um, making a kind of rumbling noise. And then this one. like. Simple. Doesn't have to be over the top. So I'm going to add a border. So I'm going to add a similar kind of sketchy border around it. See, art journals don't have to be, you know, everything in the kitchen sink. You can just do, you know, little sedate ones now and again. Play with your resources. Experiment. See how they work with each other. See, I know now not to use the oxides on a background that I've already pre-done. But actually, probably most stamps. Because it don't work very well. I'm just going a little bit wavy. Kind of like that. Okay, so from the second stamp set, because there's no sentiments or sayings in the first set, but there is in the second. So we've got three different sayings. So you've got to, cre to create is to be alive. Close your eyes, otherwise you won't see anything. And this one, your imagination can take you anywhere. It's that one that I want today. So now we've got that, I'll bring the stamp press back in. Drop that down and then I think, should we have that there or there? 
or there. Now I think there is the right place for it. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bring those magnets in so that they're fairly close. Come on! Oh, there's always one. Thank you. I'm going to drop that one there. Just put it around so that I know I've got a pretty decent kind of run. And make sure I get it the right way up. And I'm probably going to have to get my head in shot a little bit now, just as I check on the line up. I think that will probably do it. Close down, and this probably will need two or three. a little bit there, just grab that with my finger. I think that's going to be about as good as I'm going to get it on that one. Give the stamp a quick wipe off. Okay, I'll have a quick tidy up my bits and bobs away, get rid of the stamp press and then I'll be back in a second. Okay, so I've had a little bit of a tidy up, but I completely forgot that, <laughs> that I was going to use that one as well, that stamp as well. So I've got a little bit of ink just on the inside there. Let me just clean that off quickly. That should do. And then we can put the page back in again. Ooh, too close. Snap my fingers off then. Right, so move them off the stamp press all together. So I'm going to put one there, one actually there, and one there and then one there. That's just pretty much going to hold those down and kind of keep it flat. So this time I'm going to drop that one about there like so and I'm going to use a kind of orange colour now. I think I've got tiger lily somewhere. Yes. So I'm using orange because that's not that far away from like the yellow ochre. That's providing that this hasn't dried up. Because again, fairly old stamp. Try rusty hinge, which is a bit darker but still kind of orangey brown. It might just be that that stamp is, yeah, there you go, you see, better. And I know this is non permanent. I want maybe not actually maybe just that one up there what did I do with the stamp pad there it is just 
actually light. Just move that up there. Just flatten out the paper as much as possible. Kind of mitigate the circumstances. Yeah, happy with that. And then I will do another one down here, but this time I'm only going to go really, really lightly. Maybe just do the one impression. There we go. Done. Done, done. Okay, let's put the inks away. And then this time, rather than using a black pen, I'm actually going to use a pencil because it's lighter. And I'm just going to go and then with that one could have used a charcoal pencil, I suppose. But if I thought about it, I could have used about a hundred different one resources on the same page. And then we'll just do a quick See so after you've done a project like this, you can always think to yourself, well how would I have done that different if I'd have used different resources? And there's nothing wrong with that. And there's nothing wrong with going back and actually doing it as well. That's what practice is all about. And we all know that practice makes perfect, or in our case, acceptable. One of those things about um, people always saying, oh, how do you know when a page is finished? You know, how do you know when to stop? Um, I heard a really good answer to that question the other day, um, and it was, Rembrandt, I think, I was watching a program on Rembrandt, and he always said, um, apparently, that you know when a painting is done, when the intention of the artist for the painting has been fulfilled. There. <laughs> Answered the question now. So yeah, you now know when a page is done, when to step away from it, when your intention for the page is done. There you go. So that's it. I'm not going to do any more because I don't have to. So all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to sign it, date it, uh, 26 today, and then I'm going to call this page done. It's all from me for now. I will see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you these videos would not be possible. Thank you.